and welcome to the Empower Your End User webinar. I am Sagi, and for the next 30 minutes, I will walk you through the most um, most of the extensions of OpenLM. Uh, but please feel free to ask any questions during the demonstration using the Go to Webinar questions box. So, what are we going to talk about today? Well, today we will go over the basic positioning of, of the OpenLM on a network, meaning uh, what goes where and how. Uh, we'll review the main extensions of OpenLM and discuss the benefits of each one. We will go over all the most widely used extensions in short, uh, such as the Active Directory synchronization, the uh, roles and permissions, uh, the alerts, the options file management extension, all those. <clears throat> we will also, oh, hello, now you can see me. Uh, so uh, we will also go over all the tiers of the OpenLM agent. We will be taking a look at the core agent functionality. We'll be taking a look at its extensions and we see how it can allow you uh, keep your end users informed about their usage, about the licenses that they need, but we'll see everything. Next, we got the uh, active agent tier which shows which will show you exactly how you can control the behavior of your users meaning that you can uh, see if if they're using the application or not you can close the application if you want you can release the licenses you can do it automatically you can do it manually uh, and lastly we'll be taking a look at the uh, newest product of openlm it's the app manager functionality which allows to uh, monitor and control any type of license. So it can be uh, node lock, named locked, uh, it can be a standalone application, no problem. Uh, it, can be, it can be monitored by the active agent itself. But of course, then I'm gonna show you everything in time. You will see a demonstration of everything uh, working. So at the end of the presentation, I would like to uh, answer your questions. If you have any questions, you want to know anything about the, uh, about the webinar, we can have uh, a Q&A session. You can ask anything about the OpenLM system. So uh, what do the OpenLM extensions do? Well, OpenLM extensions are uh, extra optional modules that enhance the functionality of OpenLM. Uh, so as you probably know, the OpenLM core product offers you full monitoring capabilities. But if you require more out of OpenLM, maybe you need more managerial capabilities, you need OpenLM to be automatic, uh, maybe you want to get notified when something happens, when you, maybe you want to control license usage, not only monitor it, Maybe you want to do many different managerial uh, things that you can do to increase your utilization and uh, pretty much make OpenLM fully enterprise ready as a result. So, what are we seeing here? One moment. Just gonna mute. Uh, so what are we seeing here? What goes where? Uh, now, I would like to get your uh, bearings in OpenLM. So uh, we will take a look at the architecture of the OpenLM system. So it's it's pretty simple. It's compiled uh, of the OpenLM core, the OpenLM broker, and today it will be also comprised out of the OpenLM agent as well. So looking at this slide, you can see that, first of all, you got your license managers right here. Now, all your different uh, license managers can be monitored by OpenLM, so all of them together. Here you see just one, but it's all of them. They have the OpenLM broker on the license server. 
it sends data to the OpenLM core product. And if you want to view the data, you can simply use any device, any browser, and just view the data, connect to the OpenLM core. Now, the workstations themselves can also connect to the OpenLM core, as you can see here. And it provides the data of the OpenLM agent. The OpenLM agent is installed on those workstations. So the data is sent out to the OpenLM core. The app manager itself <clears throat> also sits on a network server and uses a broker, but I'm not gonna dive too deep into it. It pretty much uh, works as the middleman between the agent and the OpenLM core. It adds a lot in the middle. So now uh, I will be showing you the extensions of OpenLM, uh, but keep in mind that I am limiting the webinar to the most uh, interesting extensions of OpenLM has to offer. Uh, you will be seeing a live running system, which is connected to an Autodesk license manager. And this will help me demonstrate uh, the best extensions of OpenLM. So basically all the extensions you are about to see aim to show you how OpenLM can help you pretty much stretch your licenses to their limits. So let's take a look, let's jump to the system. Okay, so we got the easy admin right here. We got a license server, uh, one license server, uh, configured already, we got the app manager, and I'm gonna show you everything about it. Now, first of all, I wanna talk a little bit about the general extensions of OpenLM. Let's say that you have, you probably have an active directory, and you want to interface with that, you want to get the users from it, so OpenLM can interact with that Active Directory and get the users. And OpenLM can also group them accordingly. So if you want to group the users by the country they're in, you can. If you want to group them by the uh, organizational unit that they're in, you can, by department also. Maybe you don't want to group them at all, you can also do that. So once you get all your users from the Active Directory to the OpenLM system, then you get all their information. You also get their login information. So you get, you, that means that you can use uh, either their password stored in LDAP or an IIS connection, meaning Windows authentication, to, to connect to the OpenLM system. Why would you like to do that? First of all, you would like to, uh, uh, to report on those users, to report uh, by user, by group, you would like to know who is using what and when. Pretty understandable. And you also want to know which department they're from and everything, yeah. yeah. But you can also set different roles to different users in OpenLM. So you get the, uh, uh, the passwords from the LDAP, from the Active Directory. It, compiles it and deposits it in the OpenLM database. And then you can set that one user, for example, will only be able to see a certain report. And another user, you want to see, you want him to see everything because he's an admin. Uh, maybe you have a manager and you want the manager only to receive reports every week or something. So you can set different roles to different users. And, uh, and this way, you can have many users in OpenLM. Now, besides that, OpenLM has an ability to also notify you when certain criteria are met. So let me quickly jump over those criteria and uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So you probably, want to get notified by your system because then that means that OpenLM is much more automatic. It pretty much works on its own or 
it tells you when something's wrong, when you when you need to do something, when you have an action item. So let's see what we get. First of all, you can get an email, an SMS, just show an alert. You have many options right here to get notified. And the conditions themselves that you can set is, let's go over them one by one. It's license server not responding. Let's say that you have a license manager that is down or a license server that is down. So you want to get notified. Maybe you want to bring it up. Maybe you want to check what's going on. So the system, the Open Alarm system, will notify you on that instance. Uh, usage percentage over a certain amount. So here it's 90%, but you can set it to pretty much wherever you want, whatever you choose. So if the license is about to be maxed out, meaning that I don't know, you have 100 licenses and 93 people are currently using. Well, that means that people are about to get denied. You want to know about it. You want to be able to do something about it. So you can get notified once a license is about to be maxed out. You can get notified when a license is being duplicately used, meaning someone opened the application twice on the same workstation. You can get notified when a license is about to expire. Here it's two weeks, but you can put whatever you want. So a license will 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 expire. Will be uh, will expire in two weeks. I will get notified about it. So you can get ready. You can get the budget that you need. You can get all the reports that you need. So you won't be surprised when a license is expired. You know when it, it's going to happen. Users no, with no default group or project, um, if you are using the LDAP, so everybody should have a group because you group it with the LDAP. So if someone doesn't have a group, so that's unauthorized usage. Someone is using an application and it doesn't have an authorized uh, uh, username. So you can get notified about that as well. You can tell if someone is using the application for too long. For example, someone is using for 12 hours. Now, 12 hours, he went home. He's not using it. So you can get notified, and he can also get automatically notified about the situation, meaning that he can get an email saying that, uh, hey, Bob, remember to put back your license when you finish with it, when you go home. And this one just tells you that something wrong with the system, like a lot of denials within a short amount of time. You can set it to whatever you want, but you got a thousand denials in 10 minutes. Well, something's wrong. Something's happening. Maybe the license server is up. You got uh, all the usage and everything seems to be okay, but people are getting denied like crazy. So maybe the license file uh, is defected defective, maybe someone changed it, maybe someone's working with it. So you can get notified and you know that something is going on with the system. A lot of people are getting denied. So you see that uh, the alerts extension allows you to get notified and you can be informed about everything that's going on in your system, pretty much everything that you're interested in. Now, our next extension, before I go to the agent tiers, is the options file management extension. The options file management extension, one moment, let me just close other tabs for it to be faster. So the options file management, it allows you to change and edit the options file that you have. Usually an options file is something that kind of looks like this. It's very messy, it's very complicated. It allows you to reserve licenses to users. You can exclude users, you can include users. Uh, you can say, for example, uh, group sales will only be able to pull 10 licenses and will only be able to pull Autodesk licenses and all that. Now, this is a part of FlexLM. It's not an open an LM, not an open LM file. It's a part of a FlexLM file. It's an options file. You can even do it right now if you want. But it's very hard to create. 
like if you have like I don't know 10 10 groups or maybe uh, 20 users or something like that then no problem but let's say that you have a thousand users like 200 groups and uh, you have like 750 different features so maintaining that script uh, that's a nightmare that's simply a nightmare it's usually someone, one guy, that's, uh, that's his job. He's doing only that, working only on the options file. So the OpenLM interface, the OpenLM options file management can allow you to create it using, uh, simply using this interface. So uh, let me show you an example. Let's take, for example, this one. Let's take 2015, this feature. And let's say that I want to add a group to it. So I'll add groups. Let's take a USA group. I'll take USA development, for example. And I want, I can reserve license, I can exclude or include them, but let's include them, okay? they will be included. So once we save, then if we preview right now, then we'll be able to see include this feature that we chose for Group USA Development. So this creates, uh, the, the options file management interface creates the options file for you. It knows the correct syntax, it knows what to do, it knows what goes where and how, and you simply you don't have to worry about it. You just uh, select, click, and that's it. It's very simple. Once you deploy it, it deploys automatically to the license manager. So you don't even have to get the file there. Just click deploy after you save. That's it. Now, this is very handy when you have uh, for example, you want to uh, set different reservations of licenses to different users, like, I don't know, you have two managers and they all, they supposed to have licenses always. So you can reserve two licenses for them. Or maybe someone is not, uh, should not be able to borrow a license and go to the field with it. So you can exclude him from it, or you can exclude him from a certain, uh, a certain uh, application and only have him use a certain application. So it's pretty much, you have a lot of options. There are also all the policies and everything. It's very useful. I suggest, uh, I suggest, suggest you try it out. Now, let's move on to the OpenLM agent and all its capabilities and benefits. As I said, the OpenLM agent sits on a workstation. Now, for all inter intended purposes, this machine I opened right here, the this this VM, is a workstation. I have AutoCAD right here. It's pulling from a license manager. So, I want to show you first the lowest tier of the OpenLM agent. I have OpenLM agent installed here. And the lowest tier is the core functionality tier. Meaning that it's not an extension. You already have it if you have OpenLM, evaluation version, enterprise version, site license, doesn't matter. You have OpenLM, you can install the agent now. It will be a core agent without active agent. It will be an inactive agent, but you will get the following functionality. So if we go here, now I'm the end user. I'm the engineer now that wants to use AutoCAD. So if I click here and go to license usage information, then as an end user, I can see all the, all the uh, features, all the licenses that are now being used. So let's say that I need publisher. So I see 15 out of 15. I click on it and then I see, oh, uh, Alexis is using, Charles is using, Elizabeth is using. Uh, they've been using since 12 p.m. So maybe they can um, 
maybe they can uh, release it for me I can maybe call them up I can talk to them now once we click on them we also get their uh, details their contact details now here I don't have their contact details because I'm not connected to an LDAP but if you are connected to an LDAP then you'll have the title the email the telephone number everything about the user and then the users can just simply work it out between themselves and say and and save you a lot of work as an admin now this is one benefit of the core agent the second benefit of the core agent is a license is free notification license availability notification now let's say that you're an engineer you try to pull a license meaning that you open AutoCAD or something but you got denied so what's the most logical thing to do well you try to get the license every every minute or every two minutes but you'll try to get the license again and again and again and again and again because you don't know the state of it so what you can also do is set an availability notification to notify your end user once that license got available meaning that they were denied from pulling AutoCAD but once a license of AutoCAD got free the OpenLM agent notified them and said hey you got a free license I know that you were denied from it before but it's free now so try to use AutoCAD this way the engineer doesn't sit on his hands he actually goes out and works and does something else until the OpenLM agent tells him that he can pull an AutoCAD license so that also saves you a lot of money because uh, uh, engineer hours it's expensive and usually engineers that just sit on their ass and just try to get the license again and again and again it's not very profitable now these are the uh, two benefits of the OpenLM agent while using the core product of OpenLM now if you want to use extensions then the OpenLM, can, the OpenLM agent can give you functionalities uh, that allow you to monitor and control the behavior of your users how does it do that first of all it will uh, it will let you know if they are idling if you use the actual usage extension with the OpenLM agent then you will know if the application is idling meaning that you're not using the application so if the CPU and memory usage of it is below a certain threshold then the system just the open arm system recognizes it as idle and if it's idle then you'd know about it now you're probably asking asking yourself well what if they are running something at night it's they're not by the computer but I don't want it to 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 do something uh, I don't care about that so I'm gonna show you also the uh, save and close option and it also works with the idle time so know first that the idle time itself is being uh, taken into account after the system goes over a th certain threshold of CPU and memory usage but let's go over it and see it with our own eyes so let's open this the in-house Autodesk should be able to see myself so uh, this is me right here this is my username my group uh, product name I'm using I'm using uh, for like a minute now uh, I've got idle time of the workstation about 17 seconds it takes about a minute or two for the idle time to get here because the system needs to recognize that it's idle so now the system the uh, workstation itself is not doing anything with the application so the application goes uh, the application processing goes below a certain threshold and the OpenLM system recognizes that it's idle and every minute it sends to the OpenLM server so here we've been idle for like two minutes uh, we can see it also on the graph right here and 
if we scroll to the right, then we'll be, all, uh, be able to also close the application. Now, if you see the idle time, then yeah, you can go and close the workstations and release licenses and pretty much do whatever, is, whatever it is you do uh, when licenses are stressed, when you need to release licenses. So you can do that or you can just click close app and after about a minute or two, it will close the application. So let's open up the AutoCAD and wait for about a minute for the transmission to arrive. And then it will automatically close our application. So you see it popped up a notification on the right here saying that the OpenLM agent recently closed AutoCAD at system administrator's request. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, if he, if he was working on something, didn't I just destroy his work? No, it saved the process, it saved the work to the last file he was using and closed the application and released the license. Now you can either save and close the work, meaning that if it's a new file, then it saves it to a temp folder. If it's an older file, then it just saves the work. You can also use the suspension method, which suspends the application and releases the license. Once the user wants to use the application again, he can ask for the license. And if there's a license available, the process will be thawed out, will be unfrozen. But this is also a way for you to freeze the application and prevent the user from utilizing the, uh, the license while it's out. You can also run a procedure, meaning that you can run a custom command on the end user workstation. So you can either gracefully close the application, gracefully suspend the application, you can violently kill the process, you can violently uh, uh, suspend the process, or you can just run a, we call it a agent command, it's a CMD command, a command prompt, which you can uh, pretty much pop up anything on the workstation. Uh, so you wanna pop up a notification saying to the guy, hey, you've been idling for like one hour, um, put back the license. Whatever you choose, you can close their uh, workstation, Whatever you do, whatever you want to do with the uh, uh, with the CMD script that you can add to it. So the agent is pretty much a portal, a portal for the admin to uh, to be able to uh, not control but monitor and manage the users on the workstation. So as you've seen, it closed my application, and it did that because I clicked here. I clicked close app. What if I wanna do it automatically? <clears throat> then I can set the system to automatically close the application or release the license when a certain threshold is reached. What does that mean? Let's say that you have 100 licenses and 95 licenses are currently in use. So you set the threshold of usage to be, well, if it's more than 90% of usage, which is 95% right now, if it's more than 90% of usage, meaning that the licenses are being maxed out, are being stressed, then start releasing licenses. But whose? Whose licenses? Just everybody? No. <clears throat> start releasing licenses with whoever has the most amount of idle time. So you can set if the, <clears throat> sorry about that, if the usage percentage is over like 90% and the idle time is over like one hour, then release his license, close his application, suspend his, his application, do whatever you choose. But you can also do that, as I said, automatically, either manually by the close app button or just automatically and you simply don't have to worry about it. Now, what does that cause? that causes your licenses to increase in utilization and availability to your, uh, to your engineers because users are not keeping a hold of licenses. First of all, if it will release their license for them, 
they will know that they are being tracked. They will know that they're being monitored. So they will act accordingly. And if they'll, they won't know that and they keep doing what they're doing, it will simply release licenses that they're not using. So those licenses that were used for everybody are suddenly released, are suddenly mostly available. When uh, I worked at my last job, <clears throat> I did just that. I worked at a lab and I came in the morning, I went to the uh, device's PC, pulled a license, that's it. I held it for months. So to prevent users that hog licenses, you can use just that. You can use the active agent to release those licenses. Now, all I said uh, up until now refers to floating licenses. <clears throat> but what if you have named licenses? Usually, users have named licenses along with floating licenses, along with standalone licenses and named licenses. And usually, th there is a whole hybrid system of licenses for each user. So instead of only monitoring the floating li licenses, the agent has the highest extension, the highest uh, tier of it. It's called the OpenLM App Manager. So the agent with the App Manager allows for tracking pretty much any application. Now, it, it doesn't support cloud-based applications, but if it has a process running on the end user workstation, we can ma we can uh, monitor it, we can track it. So opening up the uh, OpenLM app manager uh, window here, I have a few applications. I have MATLAB, for example, which is uh, floating and named licenses. Also Autodesk, named licenses and floating licenses. Photoshop, which is a standalone license. Um, like Power BI, which has no license, just standalone software. Uh, PZIP, I just added it, it's like WinZip, just added it here to show you that it can track everything, everything with the process. Doesn't matter if it's small, if it's big, if it's compound, doesn't matter. It, it monitors everything. Now, besides monitoring it, you can also control it, but why would you want to monitor it from the get-go? Why would I want to monitor named licenses? Named licenses are one user, one license, that's it. Why would I want to track that? Well, it's one user, one license, yeah. But what if that user is using one hour a week? Maybe he's using one, one day a week, one hour a day. Maybe he's not using anything. So. In order to know that, you can use the app manager to tell that, oh, this user has a named license and he only uses one hour a day. So I'm gonna take that guy and put him in the floating license pool and I'm gonna get someone that works hard, works 10 hours a day on the application, get him from the floating license pool and put him uh, and just give him a named license because he's mostly using it all day. So he should get a named license. This way, you can um, you can save more. You can uh, get the, the most amount of utilization that you can get from those licenses because now you're getting a one-to-one -one ratio from those licenses, and you don't know if it's true because if he's using one one hour a week, that's not a one-to-one -one ratio. You're losing money. You can shift people around to give the users who need more licenses more license time, you can give them the named license, and the others you can put in the floating pool and they won't feel the difference. Now, one thing that you can do is limit the amount of applications that, are, that can be opened. So let's take Autodesk, for example, and just for testing purposes, I'm just gonna put it at zero. So I won't be able to pull a license because the limit I, I will 
uh, go over the limit because I will try to get one license. So going back to the workstation right here, I'll try to open AutoCAD. So I double click and I get this message saying that license limit reached. Why is that good? Some applications, some vendors, they tell you, okay, um, I give you 20 licenses, but I'm not gonna give you, uh, you're not gonna be denied after it. You get 20 licenses, if you need 21, you'll get the 21st license, the 22nd license, but you'll pay, you'll pay more than you paid for the first 20 licenses. So to prevent that for going over the licenses that were, uh, that were alloc allocated, you can set the limit and then users will not get denied by the license server, but they will get denied by you. And lastly, you can set different consumption rules. What does that mean? Let's say that I want users in China to be able to pull the applications only in Chinese working hours. USA only in working, uh, working hours of USA. So for this instance, I can set, let's say time is after uh, eight o'clock, uh, before here it's nine, but you can pretty much do whatever you want. So if it's between the USA working hours, then you can, I don't know, let's deny it. And you can string them all together so you can have the USA working hours, the Chinese working hours, uh, to have that impact only a certain user, to have that impact only a certain workstation, only a certain group of users. You can set a group of users to only be able to work, for example, with Autodesk or, or only Autodesk 2017. Let's say that you buy a new version of Autodesk and you don't want people to use 2017. You don't. You want them to use only 2018. So you can prevent them from using 2017 and only allow them the 2018. Or uh, users that should not be able to pull Autodesk, they will not be able. They will be denied from it. Now this can uh, this can uh, work on any condition, uh, on any ar argument that you. Uh, that you can think of. So the time, a time before and time after, which application you want this to work on, which username, which workstation, which group, which version, which vendor. And of course that you can string them all together and say that if it's this group and this user, but it's this vendor, then if it's within this time frame, then deny. So you can can get get it to be pretty complicated and pretty complex uh, as you like it. So now we should get denied if we try to pull Autodesk 2017 after 8 and before 9. Okay, so let's go there. Let's go to the workstation and try to pull a license. So I try to pull a license, but I got denied right here. Access denied due to the normal USA working hours rule. Now this is a rule name that I created. It's this rule, normal USA working hours. Now, of course, that you can change it to whatever you want, of course, uh, but you can see that it's very powerful as, as it allows you to prevent users from accessing applications at certain conditions. So let's allow it for now. And then I'm gonna pull the license again, just to show you that now it allows me to pull the license. So you see, I got the license, the application opens up. And again, this can work on any type of license, except cloud licenses, of course. So it can be on named licenses, node locks, standalone, uh, just small applications, large applications, Microsoft applications, whatever you choose, you're now able to monitor it. And of course, that, uh, if you're using Bentley, we also have some functionality for Bentley, like the bucket duration. Uh, you can also <clears throat> prevent users from uh, pulling more licenses, but it's uh, pretty pretty uh, limited for Bentley, but we do support some of it. 
anyway, you see now that OpenLM is pretty much a complete solution for you when it comes to, uh, to management of your system. So not only can you track and monitor the, uh, your licensing system, you can also influence it. You can also know what's going on with your users. You can know their behavior. You can uh, mix and match different licensing to match different users. So all these things, everything that I've showed you today, pretty much comes to increase your license utilization and increase your availability of licenses for your end users, for your engineers. So you pay less and get more. And, uh, and that's, that's about it. I don't really want to overload you today. Uh, we've gone over, uh, over the 30 minutes. We've, uh, I've talked for like 40 minutes. I would like to thank you very much for your time. I hope it was informative. Uh, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. You can just use the uh, the uh, questions box of the GoToWebinar tool. I will stay here for uh, for a few minutes more to answer questions. So if you have any questions, just go ahead, just write them down. Uh, I'm here. If you don't have any questions, then you can just stick stick around, uh, see what people have to say. But if you feel like you have to leave, then thank you very much for your time. If you need anything more, let us know at support at openlm.com. Okay, so the floor is yours, guys. Okay, so I have a question here. The OpenLM agent can run also, as you've seen, on a virtual machine, but also on, on just a PC. It's currently only for Windows, the agent. Can the app manager be installed on the license manager? Yes, the app manager can also be installed on the license manager, but it's better for it to have its own network, its its own uh, sorry network server, or it just can be installed on the same server as OpenLM server. Do we get the agent as a core component? The OpenLM agent, as I stated before, has a core part, which allows the end users to get notified when a license they got denied from is now free. And they can also see the state of the licenses. So that one's free. That one you can download now, work, on, work with it, it will work. It uh, doesn't matter what your licensing uh, uh, situation, as long as it's not a light version. The, the rest of the functionality is extended functionality, meaning that the actual usage, the idle time uh, uh, threshold connection, uh, this one is a paid extra. Uh, active agent, also a paid extra. But the agent also has a core uh, a core product which you can download now. It's our in our download page. Just just install it, and that's it. Is the OpenLM agent installed directly on the workstation? I think I know where you're going at. Um, you don't need to go workstation by workstation and install the OpenLM agent. No, not at all you can silently roll it out 
meaning that you, you install from a central place, from a central server, you roll it out to all the different workstations that are connected. So you won't have to do like 2000 uh, agents. You just have to do one and it's automatically rolled into the PCs of your uh, engineers. Okay, guys, uh, so if no one has uh, any more questions, then uh, thank you very much for uh, joining me today. I hope it was, this was informative to you. I hope you learned something. If you want to know something uh, further, if you have any questions, if you want to, uh, to get a price quote or maybe evaluation, then send an email to support <clears throat> at openlm.com and we'll be happy to assist you uh, with installing evaluation versions with any questions that you have. If you have any questions regarding quotes and uh, pricing, that's sales at openlm.com. The rest is support at openlm.com. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys.